Based on the original James Bond novel by Ian Fleming, Casino Royale introduces us to James Bond, the world-famous spy, immediately upon earning his license to kill. I have a vague memory of seeing this when it came out and not being blown away. I remember thinking the movie was too long because the big climactic poker scene was only about halfway into this two and a half hour movie. Now my dad and my brother have always loved James Bond films, but I never really gave them a chance for some unknown reason. Watching Casino Royale again, I realized I've made a huge mistake. This movie is one of the best action movies of the 21st century. I'd put it up against any of the Mission Impossible or any of the Fast and the Furious movies. The big tentpole action scenes are impossible to take your eyes off of. They use a lot of practical effects and the way that it's shot you never get lost in the cacophony of running, jumping, shooting, or explosions. Daniel Craig seems to be a perfect James Bond and his counterpart, the Bond girl in this movie, goes toe to toe with him in every scene. Now I'm not sure what the filmmakers did to make this look and feel timeless, but it really does feel timeless. It just got this look of early James Bond film grain and color palette. Now, if I weren't for the old cell phones, there's nothing in this movie that says 2006, and it feels like it could really live in any time. What good is a James Bond movie, though, without a killer bad guy? Mads Mikkelsen quickly is becoming one of my favorite actors. He's kind of like Robin Williams or Alan Rickman or John Lithgow, in that he can convincingly play a lovable goof or a terrifying monster. Now, while I have no room to talk, since this is really only the second Bond film I've ever watched, I can't imagine that the combo of Bond, his female counterpart, and the villain are going to get any better than this. Casino Royale works as a standalone film. It features an incredible bad guy and Bond girl and has some of the best stunt and effects work in any action film in the 21st century. Add in a better than average theme song performed by the late great Chris Cornell and you have a masterpiece. After the events of Casino Royale, James Bond has to pick up the pieces of his life while trying to stop another terrorist from doing terrorist things. Now, on the surface, Quantum of Solace and Casino Royale, they look very similar. It has that same timeless film sheen and still has a great score and incredible action scenes. But the action scenes feel more disjointed this time around. The editing is a bit quicker and the camera's a little bit shakier, and in my eyes it was harder to follow. It felt like the vision was there, but the execution just was off a little bit. A good James Bond movie is comprised of the chemistry between Bond, the Bond girl, and the dastardly plan and intimidation of the villain. In this sequel, both Bond girl and the villain were serviceable, but a couple of weeks after watching it, I can't really tell you about either of their motivations. It isn't that the movie is bad or that they are bad, it's just that it doesn't really hold a candle to the masterpiece of Casino Royale that came before it. This is a great action movie, it's just not as good as its predecessor. I appreciated that the film was about 45 minutes shorter than in Casino Royale, but I'm starting to realize that these Bond films really need a bit longer to breathe. I also liked the new song performed by Jack White and Alicia Keys, but I think I like that Chris Cornell song from Casino Royale a bit better. Like both Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, Skyfall starts off with an incredible action scene. This time a car chase through a city that is so dense with people there's no way someone didn't get hurt. The editing is a step up from Quantum of Solace and I found the action scenes easier to follow. Javier Bardem as the bad guy, he was pretty good. I liked his backstory and that explains why he was such a good adversary to James Bond. I kind of wish there was a bit more exposition into his plan. He seemed like a genius and a computer expert, but I didn't really understand what he was capable capable of. We got to see a bit more of Judy Dench's M character, and we were also introduced to Q. Now, since I have never really watched a whole lot of James Bond films, I didn't realize that Q and his insane gadgets were what made the original movie so enjoyable. I kind of like this one, though, with the scaled-back inventions and gadgets that were clearly poking fun at the over-the-top stuff from the first 20-plus movies. Now, the final showdown in Skyfall was a lot of fun because it basically turned into Home Alone, which is something I always enjoy. The Bond girl in this movie wasn't in it as much as I wanted, but from the scene she was in, I thought she was great. I kind of hope she comes back in the next couple of movies as well. I think I'm in the minority here, but I actually found Spectre to be on par with both Quantum of Solace and Skyfall. I was a bit disappointed because the incredible cast was underutilized. Christoph Waltz, Dave Bautista, Andrew Scott, Monica Bellucci, they barely had any screen time. Now, I did like Waltz's villain, but I needed to see him about five times more than he was on screen. The opening helicopter scene over Mexico City rivals one of the best action scenes in the entire series. And we also finally got a true Bond car for the first time in four movies. I'm finding that I don't really care too much about the stories and just enjoy watching the spectacle of action scenes, great set pieces, and wonderful casts. 
The fifth and supposedly final installment of the Daniel Craig Bond era is jam-packed from beginning to end with callbacks to the previous four films. There's a lot to wrap up, and that is why this movie is two hours and 45 minutes long. For the fifth time in a row, we get great actors with top billing who just aren't in the movie enough. The big bad, Lucifer, portrayed by Rami Malek, doesn't even show up until the halfway point of the movie. And even though he doesn't get enough screen time, I found him very scary in both appearance, demeanor, and his plot was pretty evil to take over the world. He plays a more traditional over-the-top James Bond villain, even though I found Mads Mikkelsen's Le Chiffre from Casino Royale to be my favorite of all of the villains. Now, I've always heard that every Bond movie has a Bond girl, and honestly, I had a hard time figuring out who the Bond girl was in most of these films because there never seemed to be just one, and none of them had enough screen time to justifiably earn that role of Bond girl. Now, in No Time to Die, there are three potential Bond girls. Anna de Armas as Paloma, Leah Sado as Madeline, and Lashana Lynch as Naomi. All three of these girls kill it in their roles. Now, No Time to Die is too long, but it's very good, with another great slew of over-the-top action scenes, explosions, and shootouts. I also like how it's the only film out of the five to include a true take-over-the-world plot, and it has some great future tech. It's the second best in the franchise behind Casino Royale, and a fitting conclusion to the Daniel Craig era. I'm really enjoying all three big-budget action franchises that are going today. Mission Impossible for its future tech, practical stunts, and Tom Cruise's intensity, Fast and the Furious for its over-the-top, unbelievable car action, and more testosterone than I thought was possible, and of course, James Bond with its suave, stylish espionage where every film offers a new bad guy with a plot to take over the world. If I were to rank the theme songs for the five movies, my least favorite was Writings on the Wall by Sam Smith from Spectre. Next would be Another Way to Die by Jack White and Alicia Keys from Quantum of Solace. No Time to Die by Billie Eilish for No Time to Die, You Know My Name by Chris Cornell, Casino Royale, and my favorite of all of the theme songs is Skyfall by Adele from the movie Skyfall. If I were to rank the villains, in fifth place we have Matthew Almorick as Dominic Green from Quantum of Solace. Number four, Christoph Waltz as Blofeld in Spectre, and that's only because he wasn't in the movie nearly enough. Number three, I have Javier Bardem as Raul Silva from Skyfall. In second place, we have Rami Malek as Lucifer Safin from No Time to Die. And as I've stated multiple times, the number one best Bond villain from the Daniel Craig era is Mads Mikkelsen as Le Chiffre from Casino Royale. And finally, if I were to rank the films, in fifth place, we have Quantum of Solace. Fourth place is Spectre. Third place is Skyfall. Second place, No Time to Die. And the best Bond film from the Craig era is Casino Royale.